Hi, I'm John the Engineer, and lesson number eight is going to be about why humans are stupider than ants and how Federal Reserve banknotes were foisted on the United States public to substitute for the United States Treasury notes. This is from my Abolitionist Party flyer of years ago, and right here we see an example of a United States note. And on the other side, we see an example of a Federal Reserve note. I mean, they're identical, except on the back. Those are different. This is from poembank.htm at johntermel.com. Mother Nature. In Mother Nature, ants you see, no slouchers, not a one. They manage full employment, which man has yet begun. Like in the Great Depression, where men sat before their trees, with hammers, nails, and chainsaws, their lot was still to freeze. They couldn't build their houses, and they couldn't grow their food. They couldn't clothe their families. Such ineptitude. What makes the ant superior to men and all his deeds? The ants are not dependent on scarce money for their need. Man is the only animal who has to pass the test. To get cash for his pay, his boss must pay some interest. Because of lack of money, men were brought down to their knees. Then came the war, and there was money, plenty as you please. They now constructed barracks, and their food they now could grow. They now could make the uniforms production on the go. The war had put the scarcity of money to an end. Destruction was acceptable, so money they would spend. Where was that money years before with idle men in ranks? The cash was kept in short supply on purpose by the banks. But I believe that engineers can equal ants so skilled at rounding up and turning on manpower unfulfilled. The need to work may soon pass by for a man to earn his keep. In age of new robotics, he should only have to reap. But if you wanted to create new jobs for those who hurt, you could remove a tractor and have ten men digging dirt. And if you wanted to create more jobs so very soon, you could remove the shovel and give each of them a spoon. It's not the job they really want. It's cash with which to buy. And only useful work should be the enterprise they try. When every source of power can put out all of its might, mankind will match the ants at last and shed its greatest light. But, sir, it wouldn't be a first. It's happened quite a lot. There's linear in history and rave reviews it got. Historical examples. The record most successful case was in the British Isle, where tallies, sticks of money, left King Henry one would smile. Accountants in the treasury would split the stick in two. One half would be the money, and the other half its due. A tally worth a pound of gold to pay the king's expense. The other half amounted to taxation that made sense. The tax collectors through the land all had an easy way, since people had their tallies and enough the tax to pay. The tallies funded projects and could pay for everything. With tallies matching tax, a hero, Henry I, their king. For over 700 years, the tallies were in use. But having lost control of money, now is crown's excuse. Antiquity. In 3rd millennium BC, King Hammurabi great. No fractional reserve checking accounts. There's no debate. B.C. 546, Bank of Lydia was Croesus's quest. We'll use clay chips instead of gold and save the interest. Soon, warring tribes were summoned with Prince Cyrus at the head, who crushed their little country bank. King Croesus soon was dead. The Spartan king Lysurgus said, All those who journey made shall buy in with their gold for chips of clay in town to trade. Whatever chips they have when leaving, with our gold we'll pay. But we shall profit from the interest for time of stay. Solon used the coinage bronzed and set financial rules. The money system's tricky, so I must protect the fools. No Greek for loan made pledge to slavery himself or kin. To let our families be chained is more than mortal sin. In B.C. 338, the Roman Empire took off with aes grave copper coins, which paid for growth enough. Recently, 
Not only were there abolitionists in Bible days, but there were many more for abolition I can praise. Abolish interest. The kings and popes of Middle Ages were the one to say that interest was evil, but since then they've lost their way. Some presidents who of this populist idea knew, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Andrew Jackson, too. Some brilliant scientific men were also of accord. With Franklin, there was Thomas Edison and Henry Ford. The native North American civilization's great did wampum promissory IOU beads advocate. All issued IOU beads for their horses, hide, and seed. Each mark on bead meant value personally guaranteed. The whites said they should put away their private currency, so braves lined up with whites at unemployment agency. Forced to use whites' currency, they had to play the game, and in the larger game of nations, they came out so lame. Our forebears' generations called it work bee on a date when, where men could pay their taxes with some service to the state. They built the roads that carved the land, the bridges over blue. To those who said they needed gold, they proved it wasn't true. Now look at how it works today. Let's get it understood. Replacing wooden tallies now is paper pressed of wood. Two notes used in America can clearly show the way. Both legal tender now down south. They can be spent today. United States note issued by the nation's treasury and Federal Reserve note, which is banker's currency. Their fronts are very similar, except the name they state. Their backs are very different. It means another plate. The Treasury provided notes for federal expense and taxed them back to balance books with numbers that made sense. In 1913, other plates were given to the banks. Creation of the money, they gave politicians thanks. The government had given banks permission to create a batch of brand new money to be lent at interest rate. The government then borrowed from them, and at the request, the Congress passed the income tax to pay them interest. One congressman objected, Louis T. McFadden, loud, the greatest crime in history, he said with head unbowed. Ten dollars out, eleven back, it often takes a while, but after years the end result's a melancholy style. I see no reason for a tax to pay them interest when use of plates by treasury would lower taxes best. The money from the treasury was used down south before. The greenbacks used by Lincoln paid to win the Civil War. The Continentals did their job until King George did state, there'll be no use of your own plates for gold, you'll have to wait. Though we've been told that their revolt was over tax for tea. Ben Franklin said the war's because they took our currency. The money from the treasury, its use did almost cease. To pay the interest to banks, the taxes did increase. And when we ask the treasury, why is it never used? In answer, we get silence and an attitude bemused. So to this day, the bulk of the American supply is borrowed from the banks at rates that make debts multiply. All governments do service debt by taxing you and me instead of letting treasury create it interest-free. So the best example of the stupidity of mankind was in the First World War, the date of the German invasion when they attacked France and Belgium, and they got word that the Germans have attacked, and the tr you know controller of all the trains telephoned the first village down the line and said, hey, you got to destroy all the trains, the Germans are invading. Well, anyway, he shuts off shop, rushes down the track, and when he gets to the next town, he finds all the trains are still there, the tracks are fine, nothing's been happening, so he rushes and fi finds a train master and said, well, what are you doing? I ordered you to destroy the trains, the Germans are invading. He said, don't worry, I took care of it. I sabotaged it so we'll never be able to use it. He said, what do you mean? They're all there ready to go. He said, no, 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 I burned all the train tickets. <laughs> Imagine, he burned all the train tickets. Well, the really funny part about the stupidity of the thinking that is that the Germans never actually made it to their ocean. They were stopped. And the main reason was, after the war, they explained, after capturing that railroad train, the uh, terminal, they didn't find any of the train tickets. Um, Johnny Engineer Termel saying, we don't have to be stupider than ants. We equal, equal ants, 100% employment. They do it. We can do it. All we got to do is get rid of the interest that causes unemployment and inflation. Um, Johnny Engineer, the abolitionist engineer, Termel, 
do your homework and get ready for heaven. I'm trying to engineer it.